Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ajay Kumar Yadav. Today I am going to teach you the amplitude modulation. Right? It is a kind of uh, the amplitude modulation is uh, comes under a analog modulation in which the message signal uh, or we can say that modulating signal is a form of analog signal. Right? And uh, so this is all about uh, um, brief discussion of uh, amplitude modulation. Now, uh, we are first in this slide, we are going to discuss about uh, what is the modulation and uh, why we are going to the modulation. Uh, why we are going, what is the need of the modulation? Uh, and uh, you know about that modulation is a property, is a process in which one of the characteristics of uh, the carrier signal which contains a high frequency uh, changes with respect to massive signal amplitude variation. The massive signal is also called as modulating signal. This is also called as modulating signal, right? Modulating, modulating signal, right? The message signal is also called as modulating signal. Uh, ultimately, modulation is the process. We are just mixing uh, with this carrier frequency and message signal frequency, which contains a very low frequency. If you are comparing the frequency of the carrier signal, right, so that we can transmit the signal faithfully, right, and uh, and also these characteristics of the carrier signal can be this uh, characteristics of the carrier signal can be amplitude, amplitude, phase, you know, phase and uh, frequency. These three parameters, these three characteristics of the carrier signal can be changed. Uh, if you are getting, if you are changing with uh, respect to matter signal amplitude variation, that means uh, uh, that this, that process called as modulation, right? Now, now why we are going to the modulation? First reason is that, first reason is that reducing the antenna height. You know about that, uh, if we have a communication system, this is the channel, you know, channel, this one is the receive, uh, receiver, this one is the receiver, and uh, this one is the transmitter. We have three blocks, transmitter, channel, and, uh, sorry, transmitter channel and receiver. We have, uh, right, so we have three blocks that we have mentioned over here, transmitter, receiver and channel, right. Suppose uh, here is the antenna in the transmitter site or uh, after just radiating, I mean to say that this transmitting signal just going to radiate with uh, this antenna called as transmitting antenna and after that uh, this uh, signal passes to the channel and at the receiver side it is also uh, you know uh, also radiates I mean to say uh, that this uh, signal just converted into electrical signal this antenna called as you know receiving antenna for faithful radiation of uh, any antenna I mean I am talking about uh, transmitting as well as receiving antenna. For faithful radiation of any antenna, height must be lambda by 4, right? The height that we have of the antenna should be lambda by 4. If we are putting the value of lambda is just equal to the speed of the light divided by the frequency of the, of the signal. If you are just putting those values, uh, we will have a relationship between the antenna height uh, of uh, uh, speed of the light as well as frequency. If our frequency, suppose without modulation, we are just going to send these signals. Uh, these signals, the frequency of this modulating signal or massive signal in the kilohertz, kilohertz, it has a kilohertz frequency, right? Uh, so what will happen? What will happen over here? Uh, this signal has a kilometer, kilo, kilohertz frequency, and what about this one? Is uh, 
megahertz that we are getting that we are taking megahertz frequency right if r signal with, without modulation if we are going to the transmit this signal through a transmitting antenna uh, for special radiation of any antenna antenna height must be lambda by 4 and approximately if you are putting the value of uh, a kilometer suppose we have a signal a monitoring signal that uh, has the frequency is kilohertz right if you are putting those values kilohertz frequency we will get the lambda and just divide by 4 we will get a approximate means height must be approximate kilometer height must be kilometer height if you are calculating those values Putting those values, the value of this cap, uh, speed of light, we know about that 3 into 3 into just 10 to the power minus 10 to the power 8 meters per second. 8 meters per second, if you are putting those values, and you will get the antenna height uh, is going to be 1 kilometer or 2 or 10 kilometer. That is all about the calculation, right? So, it is very difficult to construct. Uh, a kilometer antenna height, you know, it's a huge, huge length antenna uh, that have the huge length. So it is very, it is very difficult to construct a kilometer antenna height. So why we are going? So why don't we go through the the frequency that signal we have a kilometer kilohertz? That we are why don't we go through the increase the frequency of this matter signal? So the process for increasing the frequency of this massive signal is called as modulation or we can say that uh, with the help of this carrier frequency which contains a uh, which contains high frequency approximate in uh, megahertz right so the first reason is that uh, for special addition of antenna the antenna height must be lambda by 4 correspondingly uh, for reducing the antenna height we must be increase the frequency of the signal so after modulation Right, we just increase the frequency to reduce the antenna height. Right, so this is all about uh, the first reason and uh, what is the modulation. Right, now the second, now I'm going to second reason why modulation is very important. A technology that we have to understand and how to implement those things. Right, multiplexing, as uh, you can see here. Uh, the name of this multiplexing is the multiplexing multiple. Now, what is the multiple? Multiple, what is the meaning of the multiple? Multiple number. I mean, those are my own more than two, three, four, five, something like that. I think uh, more than one signals that we are going to transmit. Multiplexing is the meaning of that. We are just going to multiple number of the signals uh, to a single channel with the using with the help of single channels. With the help of single channels, we are going to multiple number of signals, right? We are just uh, these signals, right? We are just going to the transmit multiple number of signals to a single channel, and uh, called as this process is called as multiplexing, right? Generally, uh, without multiplexing, actually, modulation, without modulation, multiplexing is not possible because if you are signals, uh, suppose these signals uh, that we are just going to transmit uh, through a single channel, multiple number of signals, if suppose uh, the frequency, this signal which contains the frequency is very low as usual because uh, the, modulation, the frequency of the modulation signal is very low. Uh, if if this signal is not going to modulate, I mean to say that this signal is not going to modulate with this carrier signal. So how can it be going to transmit, right? Without mod and uh, it because uh, approximate in kilohertz frequency, it has a kilometer kilohertz frequency. And this, if you are getting if, if this signal is mixed up, then it this signal at the receiver side. Uh, there is an inter symbol interference. Inter symbol interference will occur. One symbol interfered with another symbol called as inter symbol interference. So that's why uh, modulation, uh, multiplexing, it 
high, it has to be moderation in the multiplet means, right? So these two have these, uh, you know, these two uh, reason for the uh, why we are going to the modulation for long distance communication system. Our signal must be modulated, right? For uh, so, what happened? What happened if modulation will take place? What happened if modulation will take place? The signal is just uh, which has the signal, the modulation signal which has a very low frequency, just converted into a high frequency, right? Uh, after you know, after modulation with uh, this low frequency signal convert. Uh, low frequency signal with the carrier signal we will get a high frequency so this after modulation what happened low frequency region just uh, transmitted into a high frequency region or the the, re the regions which have low frequency called as the baseband signal the signal which has low frequency called as baseband signal and uh, uh, after getting modulation the signals that we have this contains a very high frequency called as band power signals, right? So this is all about uh, uh, modulation and after modulation what will happen, right? So I am telling you uh, applications of uh, application of what can be application of the amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation. Uh, amplitude modulation. The, for broadcasting for audio. And video signals uh, during, uh, uh, with the help of the amplitude modulation, we can broadcasting audio and video signals. And uh, if you are uh, the, taking the examples, that is all India radio. All India radio is the best example of this amplitude modulation, right? So this is the applications that we have. And uh, now we are just uh, going to discuss about what is the basic. Uh, modulation in log modulation type. What is the kind of uh, basic in log modulation? So we have three kind of the basic in log modulation. First is amplitude modulation. Second one is the frequency modulation. Third one is the phase modulation. This modulation is a kind of in log modulation. That means, as I told you, the in log modulation. You know about that. Uh, how can we uh, define the analog modulation? Analog modulation is a process in which the massive signal we are just going to modulate in the analog in nature. Signals, input signals, we are just going to modulate. That is, uh, you know, uh, that is analog in nature. So, in amplitude modulation, amplitude. In amplitude modulation, amplitude of the carrier signal changes with respect to massive signal amplitude variation. And what about the frequency modulation? Frequency, as you can also uh, can be defined by uh, this term frequency and phase, right? Characteristics may be uh, the carrier characteristics may be in this the frequency modulation is the frequency, so that we can say that the frequency modulation is a process in which. Uh, uh, the frequency of the carrier signal changes with respect to massive signal amplitude variation. And what about uh, the phase modulation? And we can say that the phase of this carrier signal changes with respect to massive signal amplitude variation. So this is all about basing a long modulation and some examples that we have discussed uh, that particular slides. Now, particularly, I am Particularly, I am uh, going to discuss about uh, some mathematical expression and what is the signal of uh, amplitude modulation, right? So, as you know that for modulation, we require two signals. First is a signal uh, that which contains a very high frequency called as carrier signals and second one is a call which has very low frequency called as modulation signal, which, uh, which is just denoted by the M of T, right? I am just going to denote it. This massive signal M of T and carrier signal is just CD. We have two signals M of T and C of T. This it is just the modulation signal is just equal to AM cross 2 pi FMT, where the FM is the frequency of this uh, modulating signal, right? 
and uh, FT is the carrier frequency of this uh, carrier, which contains, we consider the frequency of this carrier much, much greater than of this, the frequency of this modulating signal or massive signal. We are taking, we are just going to mix up with this carrier signal and modulating signal. After the modulation, what, what will happen of this AM signals? So before the modulation, the carrier, the amplitude of this carrier signal is just AC. After modulation, what is what happened? What will happen? The frequency of this carrier, you know, the frequency of this uh, amplitude of this carrier is just equal to AC 1 plus K M of T. If we are putting those value, I mean to say that M of T, if we are just putting those value in this equation, in these equations, that means, um, that means these are the, sorry, uh, I'm just uh, also just going to describe this one. This one is the core as modulating signal. This one is the carrier signal. As uh, so the number of cycles is uh, is one duration is very large. Number of cycles is lot. That means the FT is much greater than the frequency of this modulating signal, right? So if you are putting those values, if you are putting the modulating signal in these equations, we will get. As you can see here, if the value, if the amplitude is going to change over here, at this state, the amplitude will be zero. At this state, amplitude is the maximum value of this amplitude of this modulating signal. If at this stage, at this instant, the amplitude of this carrier signal is also maximum. Right? This one is the AM signal, this one. That means at the different different value of the AM signal, the amplitude of this carrier signal, the amplitude of this carrier signal is also changing, right? This amplitude of this carrier signal is also changing with respect to this massive signal, this massive signal amplitude variation, right? So as you can say that, as you can say that the with the uh, with instantaneous changing of this amplitude of this massive signal amplitude of this carrier signal is also changes in AM signal but as you can see here there is no change in the frequency the number of cycles as you can find over here uh, is almost equal to the number of cycles that uh, that present in the AM signal so that so we can say that this signal is known as amplitude modulation signal, right? So this is all about that we have discussed in this slide is amplitude modulation, right? Now, now this uh, amplitude modulation, you know, this the expression of this amplitude modulation, we are just going to expand those values. We are putting m of t is just m of t is just putting the value of a m. A M cos two pi F M T. If you are putting those values, the uh, massive signal, uh, if you are just putting those uh, massive signal expression of this massive signal, we will get and uh, just uh, solve it. We will get these kind of the equations where mu is, you know, I just uh, mentioned it. Is mu a k a multiplication of k a and a m called as is just equal to mu mu is nothing but mu is nothing but mu is nothing but what what happened mu is nothing but a modulation index as we have defined over here the modulation. modulation index right so in terms of the modulation index this signal is called as this is modulation right these are the signals that uh, so as we can see here we have uh, you know we have what we have three components you know what component is that? First is the carrier component, second one is the FT plus FM component, and third one is the FC minus FM. These three components, 
and uh, apart from this carry component called as if you are suppressing this one the carry component this component called as side band component right this component called as side band component right these are the side band component these are the carrier component right so we have a frequency the component which have frequency fc plus fm and another is fc minus fm these two components if are uh, if you are you know if you are just uh, taking the fourier transform of this particular signal called as am signal we will get a you know a, we will get a uh, delta function delta function because uh, we have to understand uh, what is the fourier transform of a, a cos signal uh, before dealing with this one so we have to be understand this one is the you know a delta function impulse function we can say that if you are putting uh, if you are taking the frequency of if you are uh, taking the frequency uh, transform of this one this continuous cos signals we will get this kind of the a spectrum the extent of this carrier you know about that sorry the extent of this carrier is uh, this component is uh, the suppose this the frequency which is exists uh, at this state called as the extent of this one ac uh, divided by 2 and uh, actually i am just considering in the positive half cycle it is it is also it is also just negative or i just uh, actually i just uh, ignore it but i am just taking it as a positive uh, frequency component right so if you are taking the fourier transform of this carrier uh, component we will get a extent is ac by 2 and uh, and also this one is the component of this fc plus fm if the bands we just above this carry frequency called as upper side band this one is called as upper side band uh, if the frequency uh, band the frequency band just exists before this carry frequency called as lower side band so we have two side bands first is upper side band and, and and another is lower side band right we are just uh, uh, observing this the frequency domain analysis right so this called as upper side band and lower side band right so this is all about some uh, the frequency domain analysis the frequency domain analysis of this expansion of am signal right and uh, after that now i am going to some calculation i'm just going to go through some calculation is the power we are just going to calculate the power of am signal right as you can see here as you can see here we have uh, three components one is uh, we have two components one is the carrier component second one is the side band this one is the side band component right so if you are uh, calculating the power of this am signal we will get a, a carrier the power and side band power right the carrier power and side band power as you can see here the total power of am signal can be written as can be written as the carrier power you know carrier power total power of am signal is carrier total power of am signal is just equal to carrier power this one is the carrier and apart from that that is the side band power which is just equal to if we are just going to calculate then cc mu square divided by two you will get and uh, what about this one this one is just pc if you are adding those values pc plus pc mu square divided by 2 we will get the total power is just equal to pc 1 plus mu square divided by, 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 by 2 this power in terms of the modulation index 
you know what? As you can see here, this uh, component, we have two components. We have two components. One is the carry component and another is the sideband component. In which you can see here, you will get a FM, you know, there is no modulating there is uh, in this uh, in this particular I am talking about in this particular signal there is no message signal even over here because it is only a carrier signal as you can see here this sideband signal this sideband signal we have a component that is modulating signal uh, will be present it is just present in this in this equation right so we can say that these the, the sideband signal is called as useful signal and uh, apart from that this carrier signal that we have additional carrier signal that we have is this uh, wasted signal so as uh, you can say that the power containing the power containing of the carrier signal the power containing of the carrier signal is carrier component is said to be wasted the power carry power thing the power of this carrier signal is said to be wasted only the sideband power is useful power only sideband power that is a useful useful power this is only useful power and apart from that this carrier signal is a wasted power if you are putting the value of uh, mu is equal to 1, mu is equal to 1. If you are putting the value of mu is equal to 1 over here, that means if you just multiply with 100, that means 100% modulation, right? Uh, if you are putting the value of mu is equal to 1 over here, the power of uh, the PD can be, the PD will be just equal to PC plus what? PC by 2, right? As you know about that, if you are putting the value of uh, mu is equal to 1, right? So, if you are calculating, if you are going through the observation of uh, if, uh, the modulation is mu is equal to 1, what will happen? Only 66%, you know, only 66% of the total power is wasted power is the huge amount of the power that is going to be wasted for transmission of for the transmission of the AM signal, right? Only 33 percent of the total power, 33 33.3 percent of the total percent of the total power is going to be useful power. That means we can say that the biggest drawback of AM signal. So this is the biggest drawback of AM signal is that we have we are we are just uh, providing the power 66 percent of the total power is going to be wasted power and only 33.3 percent only 33.3 percent is going to be useful power so this is the biggest drawback of AM signal so we can say that the best drawback of AM signal that is 66 percent that is a huge amount of the power we are going to transmit of AM signal is going to be wasted, right? So biggest drawback of AM signal is that 66% of the total power is going to be wasted for transmitting of AM signal, right? So <coughs> I am going to discuss some advantages and disadvantages of AM in this slide. The DM the uh, demodulation is a very simple in AM signal. I'll talk about demodulation. Demodulation is a process in which uh, in which reconstruct of the message signal from this modulated signal, right? So it is done. It is generally done in the receiver type. In AM modulation, receiver is a envelope detector. It's been used for uh, demodulation it is very simple technique that we can reconstruct that we can demodulate uh, signals from the modulating signal modulated signal right Envelope detector is a very simple technique that can be used 
in uh, EM signal. So it is very, uh, you know, both that it is very simple method. So the modulation of the EM signal is very simple. Now EM signal is used for long distance communication. Is the this is the best advantage. This is a huge. Uh, this is the I think the best advantage of the EM signal. It is used for long distance communication. As I said. <coughs> in the receiver side, uh, the modulation is very simple, so it is used for the broadcasting. It is generally preferred for the broadcasting. It is also broadcasting, and uh, the advantage we have in AM signals that is uh, the modulation is very simple, long distance communication, and uh, because of the receiver is very simple, that means detection, in the detection that we have used, we can use uh, AM signal. Is simply prefer for broadcasting, right? The operator, the frequency of the local operator is just equal to the, the frequency that we have already uh, modulated, that is carrier frequency. If it contains some phase, some phase it contains uh, during the mod demodulation process, for particular phase of, <coughs> of the local operator, if this signal is disappear, right, that means if this the receive signal will be zero that will disappear that is uh, that is called as quadrational effect that means the particular uh, phase of this local oscillator if signal is disappear is called as that is the uh, the em signal is suffer from that quadrational effect that means <coughs> the local oscillator that we have used in the receiver type and uh, in uh, the carrier the frequency that we have uh, <coughs> we have used in uh, transmitter type must be synchronized. That means the frequency will be the same as the carrier frequency, right? So this is all about the advantage and disadvantage, right? So thank you so much for giving me. Now I am going to discuss about the some disadvantage of AM. The best, the the biggest drawback of AM signal is just overly uh, the huge amount of the power that is 66 percent, 6.6 percent of the total power is going to be wasted. Is going to be wasted for transmission of the AM signal, right? Only 33.3, only 33.3 percent of uh, 3 percent of the total power is going to be used for power. So, as uh, you know, the bandwidth of the AM signal is uh, 2 FFM, as uh, you can see here, uh, the spectrum that we have, the spectrum of this, uh, spectrum of this, uh, you know, AM signals, and bandwidth can be defined as bandwidth uh, or can be calculated by the maximum positive frequency. Maximum positive frequency that is Ft plus Fm. That is the maximum frequency and uh, minus uh, minimum frequency, minimum positive frequency that is Ft. That is Ft minus Fm. We will get two Fm. Two two Fm. So we can say that the bandwidth of the AM signal is 2 FM. So 2 FM, the bandwidth, the channel bandwidth requirement is the huge amount. Uh, that is the huge amount to 2 FM bandwidth. So this AM signal is called as high channel requirement for high channel bandwidth because of it provides 2 FM. And there are so many techniques. So many modulation techniques, uh, uh, two techniques that is uh, SSB, SSB, SB, single sideband suppressed carrier, which contains a FM, which contains only FM bandwidth. So this uh, this uh, drawback of AM signal can be eliminated, can be overcome by this SSB, SP signal, right? So, and also um, the third, the disadvantage of AM signal is that it is very highly noisy. 
<coughs> as we know that uh, the air pressure is very highly noisy and it affects the coordination and other things. So you know that suppose we have a, a suppose we have a you know transmitter transmitter and uh, receiver side that we have receiver is nothing but a deep modulation process in which we have to use a local oscillator the coordination nerve district the meaning of the coordination nerve district is that uh, suppose this signal is uh, received the signal as y local oscillator the frequency of the local oscillator equal to the frequency of the carrier signal these are the local oscillator the local oscillator the frequency of the local oscillator is just equal to the, the frequency that we have already uh, modulated that is carrier frequency if it contains some phase some phase it contains uh, during the mod demodulation process for particular phase of <coughs> of the local oscillator if this signal is disappear right that means if this the received signal will be zero that will disappear that is uh, that is called as coordination analytic that means the particular uh, phase of this local oscillator if signal is disappear is called as that is the uh, the em signal is suffer from the coordination analytic that means <coughs> the local oscillator that we have used in the receiver side and uh, in uh, the the carrier frequency that we have uh, we have used in uh, transmitter side must be synchronized that means the frequency will be same as the carrier frequency right so this is all about the advantage and disadvantage right so thank you so much